All right, so my name is Jesse, and before I dive in with a serious introduction, I've just got to say that every time we do that countdown, I encourage classes to have a dance party if they want to, and Miss Matheson's class just killed it. They were amazing. Best dance party of all time, so way to go. Um, as I said, my name is Jesse. I'm here with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. I know many of you are joining us for the very first time today. This is a really exciting collaboration between our organization and the Art Gallery of Ontario. So if you are new to us, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. We've done about 40 broadcasts since September 12th already. Uh, everything we do has been on our YouTube channel. If you want to check out volcanologists, cave divers, astronauts, and more, it's been a really incredible wild ride. So a big thank you to all of you for joining us as we get to showcase the coolest people and places on planet Earth. Now today I'm really excited because over the summer I reached out to the amazing folks at the Art Gallery of Ontario. I grew up in Toronto. I know a lot of our audience today did as well, which is fantastic, or you're there right now. It is an amazing city and it's got a world world class art gallery that does incredible virtual programs. So we wanted to partner, bring something a little different to our Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants audience, do this amazing collaboration together. And so I'm gonna be bringing up this URL a lot throughout the broadcast, but they're kicking off an incredible season of other virtual programs. I'll make sure all our classes have that. If you wanna follow up with this with much more art in the months to come, I can't encourage you to check that out enough. Now, we are thrilled today to be joined by Laboni. She is gonna take us through an amazing journey of what the age is all about and then we're going to do some live drawing together with lots of interactivity so if you're on youtube keep your hands on the on those keyboards and get ready to answer questions if you're live with us we'd love to have you guys keep your mic on we'd love to hear from you throughout the broadcast and of course get your pencil get your paper have a lot of fun and i can't wait to get started now without further ado i'm going to stop talking i'm not going to steal any more thunder i'm going to turn it over to aboni at the art gallery of ontario to blow our minds over the next 20 25 minutes welcome in <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, everybody out there in the virtual audience. And hello, Jesse. Jesse, by the way, I love that your hat is invisible because my hat is invisible too. I think we should all be wearing invisible, invisible hats today. <laughs> Very tall. Very tall, I think. Yes, yes. And as Jesse said, my name is Laboni. I am an art educator at the Art Gallery of Ontario. And we are going to do some art exploring today. So I am just going to share my screen. So we can start this journey together. Here we go. There we are. All right, welcome, welcome everybody. I am so excited to be spending part of my day with all of you. And our virtual programs are made possible through the generosity of the Art Gallery of Ontario community. So thank you to the Michael Young Family Foundation and the Azraeli Foundation for their support. Now, I know that some of you out there have probably visited the Art Gallery of Ontario before, but for many of you, it's probably a new space. So here is a photograph of the Art Gallery of Ontario taken on a much sunnier and warmer day than today. And believe it or not, the Art Gallery of Ontario has over 120,000 works of art in its collection. And we can't share all this art at once, so the art on display is always changing. Some of the art is hundreds of years old, and some of the art is very, very new, and the art has been made by artists around the world. And we have so many different kinds of art. There are drawings, and paintings, and sculptures, and videos, and photographs. And sometimes we have immersive installations where you go into a room and you have an amazing experience. So we really, really hope to see you there one day. And if not, my art friends and I are here to bring the art to you virtually. Let's look at our land acknowledgement together. The land the Art Gallery of Ontario is on is Michisage Anishinaabe Territory, Mississauga. It is also governed by a treaty between the Mississauga of the Credit and the Canadian government. Toronto is Michisage Anishinaabe Territory. It has also been occupied by other Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat Confederacies. 
I am so excited to be here with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. Today, we're going to explore one work of art from the Art Gallery of Ontario. We're going to have a virtual conversation about it. So as Jesse mentioned, the session is super interactive. I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions. I wanna hear your ideas and opinions. Never worry about being right or being wrong. The goal is to get a good conversation going around the art. And we're going to draw. So you're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil, and that's all. Even scrap paper will do. So let's begin. All right, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Laboni, the screen is blank. There is nothing on it, but there is. There is a work of art on this slide, but it is hiding. And it's hiding because we're going to play a game called the Slow Reveal. And in this game, I am going to reveal one small part of the art at a time. I want all of you to become like art detectives. Look for clues. What do you think is happening in the picture? Here we go. That is the first small part of the art. And what do you think, Jesse? Do we have any early guesses? Ooh, so again, YouTubers, if you want to chime in in the chat, you're a little bit delayed, but we'd love to hear from you as well. I'm going to do our John Black School crew. Do you have any thoughts? What do we think? Yes, Snowstorm, moon out okay. here, dark. That's amazing. These are great options. Miss Leon's class, we check with your tech. If you want to unmute your mic too, we can come to you and see if the audio is working now. Love to hear what your thoughts are as well. No, it doesn't want to work. You'll be able to share in the chat though. So the private chat on the side, and we'd love to hear from you there. So if you want to type in, but these are good options, Laboni. I like this as a start. That's an awesome start. Let's keep going. So I heard a couple of different possibilities. I think I heard the moon, a snowstorm, a blizzard. Let's keep going. Okay, there's the second section. Do we have any new ideas? Or does anybody want to add to an idea that they've already shared? Ooh, I love Northern Lights from Miss Leon's classes. Very cool. Is this kind of neat in the side? Maybe something like that. Could be, could be. Um, Miss Leon, keep, feel free to keep typing in. John Black, oh, what do we think? We got more stuff going on now. Space. John Black, what do we Black. think? Oh, space is well now. Space is like our key thing now, Laboni. We've we've taken them to the stars, I think. Amazing. So I heard northern lights. I heard space. I heard stars. Let's keep going. Starry night. Ooh. Now, now with starry night, are we thinking like the actual painting, starry night? Because that is the name of a famous painting. We got it. We got you can yell it out. <laughs> 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 yeah. We are firmly in space. Oh, we got mountain. Mountain and roller coaster, like a coaster. Wow. Ooh, I Ooh. love this. So this is my favorite part because we're all looking at the same part of the picture, but we're going to interpret it in different ways. So somebody said, could that be a roller coaster? Maybe it's the top of a mountain. I encourage all of you to think about setting too. Where in the world could we be? Are we even on this planet? Do you think this artist is portraying some other other place, maybe in the artist's imagination. Let's keep going. Ooh. This might, uh, oh, John Black again, if you want to yell it out. Sorry, I love that you were like, we could be somewhere else. And everyone's like, the moon. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Nicely done. That's wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for your amazing detective work and your guesses. So now we can see the whole work of art, but I am still hiding the title as well as the name of the artists. So before I share anything with you, I want to hear from you. How do you feel when looking at this work of art? And now that you see the whole picture, do you have any different ideas or any ideas you'd like to add? Let us know. Ooh. Well, I personally, I feel calm. It's nice. I like this. I really like blue and yellow. They're my favorite colors in the world. I like stars. It kind of looks like stars to me. That's where my mind goes. So if you want to chime in in the chat, we'd love to hear from you. I miss Leon's class. Again, you guys have been really good. John Black, what do we think? I like it. You like it? Pretty. It's good. That's a great start with all pieces of art. If you like it and you think it's pretty. And if you don't like it, that's okay too. 
it's very subjective, Arch. Absolutely. You are allowed to feel however you feel. So, Jesse, I love how you said you feel kind of calm. I feel very calm and peaceful and tranquil when I look at this art. I heard a couple people say, a couple kids said that they like it, and they're also imagining the moon. Okay, next question. What would you say is the temperature of this art? What is the temperature? Is it hot? Is it warm? Is it cool? Is it cold? Is it something else? What is the temperature for you? I know what I think, but I want to see what the kids think. Miss Leon's class, cold, cool. John Black, do you agree? Cold, yeah. cold. Yeah. yeah, cold. I think cold. It feels. We've had snowstorm at the beginning. So I think that's where our minds are going is very chilly. Yeah. That's amazing. And what did the artist do to create that feeling in you? Why do you think almost everybody feels that this is cool or cold in terms of temperature? Ooh, I don't know. My mind goes to maybe the colors that have been used. But what do we think? If we want to chime in in the chat, blue, cool color. So yes, colors, is, colors make a big difference. If this was like a bright red painting. It might not be where our minds go with cool. Yeah, blue blue is our, our pick du jour. YouTubers, feel free to chime in there as well. We'd love to hear from you. Um, all the blue, blue is cold. That's what we've settled on. I think it's, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Thanks, everybody. So blue is definitely a cool color, and that lowers the temperature of this art. And as Jesse said, if the artist has chosen different colors, if this were red and orange and it had more yellow in it, it would be really fiery and much more warm, and it would probably make you imagine a totally different environment. You probably wouldn't be thinking of the moon. Maybe you'd be thinking of the sun, or maybe you'd be thinking of a hot desert or even a super hot summer day. Okay, I'm going to reveal the title of the art and the name of the artist. So this work of art was made almost 50 years ago by a Canadian artist named K.M. Graham. And the K.M. stands for Kathleen Margaret. Kathleen Margaret Graham. And she gave this art the title Arctic Night number two. And that gives us a lot of information. It tells us the setting. It's an Arctic environment. We already knew. We figured out that it was nighttime. And it's funny because it says number two. And that makes me think that she probably made an Arctic night number one. Maybe this picture is actually part of a series. And I think that is really, really cool. In terms of size, this is, I would say, medium sized. It's just over half a meter wide and it's almost half a meter tall. Now, the Arctic is the most northern region of Earth. And in Canada, the Arctic actually covers about 40% of the Canadian environment. And in this picture, even though the artist hasn't shown any people, the Arctic is actually home to over 200,000 people, over half of who are Indigenous. And I love looking at art that way because I think it's really neat to think about what's in the picture, but also think about, hmm, what might be beyond the frame? Now, this artist, K.M. Graham, she really loved, she loved to draw and paint, and she also loved to travel. And she traveled to the Arctic for inspiration. Now, let's look at this golden wave across the sky. We had a couple interpretations of it. Does anybody have any ideas? What could that golden wave be? Let us know. Ooh, one that really jumped out earlier was the Northern Lights, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, do we still think that? Ms. Leon's class, do you want to chime in? YouTubers, Shooting John Black, stars. what do you think? Shooting, Shooting stars. Shooting stars. Shooting star, Shooting Northern stars. Lights. A lot of these like astronomical, colorful, Shooting bright stars. things you see. Northern Lights still. Okay. Great answers, guys. Yes, those are great answers, and they're all possibilities. K.M. Graham has made this art in an abstract kind of way. So it's not photorealistic. We can activate our imaginations and interpret that line in different ways. She used acrylic paint and pastel on paper. We do know, we do know that she was really, really fascinated with the Northern Lights around this time. So it's very possible that that is a representation of the Northern Lights. Does anybody know 
what are the Northern Lights? What makes the Northern Lights happen? You can give a guess too, if you're not sure, but you think, you know, let us know. I like that. We also had Santa Slay mentioned in the chat as well, which I think is very <laughs> cool. So we're, we're, we're doing lots of options today. Northern Lights. We've actually talked about Northern Lights in a lot of our broadcasts lately. If anyone's keen on our space ones, again, our YouTube channel has a lot on that. But what do we think about Northern Lights? Does anyone know what they are? Hmm. Feel free to chime in in the chat. I got see some furious typing going on. This is exciting. What do we think? Oh, we're discussing, discussing in classes. Maybe we're unsure. We got a lot of grade four, threes through fives today. So it's not something. Yes, too. I don't remember hearing about Northern Lights till I was a little bit older. Mm. So you can. Yeah. You know, well, you on us. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of neat. It's so cool because I love, you know, I love space and astronomy. And so the northern lights, they look so magical, but of course it's not magic. So they happen when charged energetic particles from the sun, they travel all the way, all the way to Earth. And they interact with the gases in Earth's atmosphere. And this is what creates these curtains of light in the sky, and they look like they're dancing. And here, if K.M. Graham has drawn the northern lights, she's shown them in kind of a yellowy green color. They're often green, but they can also appear in other colors like a purplish color, slightly pinkish, sometimes even red. So it's really, really cool. Now, there's a really neat AGO or Art Gallery of Ontario connection to K.M. Graham because, believe it or not, she actually used to be a tour guide at the Art Gallery of Ontario. That's how much she loved art. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her personal art story because I find it so, so inspiring. She wasn't making art when she was a younger person. She loved to draw and paint, but she was almost 50 years old when she started making art like this. Her husband had sadly passed away. She was also a mum. She had always loved making art and she just decided, you know what? I'm going to do this. And she started to make art. She took some night classes at a school in Toronto, but mostly she taught herself how to paint. And I think this is so inspiring because it shows that there are so many ways to become an artist and you can become an artist at any age. All right. So is there anyone out there who loves to draw and paint? Let us know. I'd love to hear from you. Yes, it's the best. I'm not the best at it, but we talked about that at the beginning, but it's very fun to draw. I like to draw nature things, especially animals. Do we like to draw on John Black? What do we think? Yeah. And it's okay yeah. to say no, too. That's what this learning is all about. But I love your enthusiasm. You guys are like super keen. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, That's amazing. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get ready to do some drawing. So just before we do some drawing, we are going to pause for a wellness moment. I am going to play some music for you. It's really, really mellow. It's about a minute and a half. I encourage you to just be comfortable, relax, enjoy the music, and enjoy the artwork. And I'm going to lead you through a little bit of a visualization exercise. And after this, we're going to shift our attention and do some drawing. So find a relaxed, comfortable position. And here we go. Imagine that you are outdoors in the Arctic. You are surrounded by snow and ice. The temperature is cool and becoming colder. You take a deep breath and exhale. And you can see your breath in the air. You are bundled up and rub your hands together or move your body to keep warm. The sun has set and night is falling. 
and the sky is so dark and clear that you can see the stars. Suddenly, Ah, oh, thank you everybody for joining me. How did that feel? Ah, relaxing, calming in my day. <laughs> it's such a nice way to start the day. I'm going to stop sharing this screen. I want all of you to get your pencils and papers ready because it's time to draw. I'm gonna change my camera so you can actually watch me drawing right from above. There we go. All right, I'm just going to give you a moment so you're all ready. And we are going to take some inspiration from K.M. Graham's Arctic Night number two. Now you can use a pencil. I'm going to use a marker just so you can see what I'm doing a lot more clearly but please know that pencil works fine. If you have other art materials around you too, like colored pencils or markers or pastels or even paint, you're welcome to use those materials. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna take our piece of paper and we are going to divide it into four sections. We're gonna fold it into four sections. Okay, so I'm going to fold my paper this way, and it doesn't have to be exact. Open the paper back up, and I'm going to fold my paper in the other direction. And open the paper back up. So now I've got four sections. Maybe I'll just darken these sections so they're a little bit easier to see. There we go. Okay. So now we are going to take some inspiration from K.M. Graham. You remember that golden wavy line? We're going to draw that wavy line four times. Once here, once here, once here, and once here. And I encourage you to draw it leaving some room around it so we can draw around it. You may put it at the top of the page. Maybe sometimes you want to put it at the bottom, sometimes in the middle. Just leave some room around it. So here I go. I'm going to use a marker so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So there's my first wave. There is my second wave. There is my third wave. And... Here is my fourth wave. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to catch up. We're gonna draw four of those waves and they don't have to be identical. That's awesome, Jesse. I like the blue. Are you seeing a blue marker? I am. I figured it was the easiest to see for our kids as we yeah. do. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to give you a series of drawing challenges. I want you to turn your imagination on. So here's the challenge. So we saw this wavy line in K.M. Graham's Arctic Night Number 2, and we thought, you know what, it may be the Northern Lights. But what can we transform that same wavy line into? Okay, for example, when I look at this wavy line over here, the first thing that actually came to my mind, it reminds me of the humps of a Bactrian camel. A Bactrian camel. Some of you may have seen Bactrian camels. So well, how would I draw that? Okay, so you can follow along with me if you want to do that too, but you can also draw something entirely different. And if you've got some cool ideas, you can share them with Jesse and Jesse can share them aloud with me. So I'm gonna try to turn this into a camel. So let's imagine this is one hump of the camel. This is the second hump of the camel. So now I'm just gonna add 
a little curved line here. So we're going to imagine this is like the neck, the long neck of the camel. And camels, they have, they have little ears. Let's give it a little ear, just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the head of the camel. Here we go. Just like that. That'll be the head of our camel. And sometimes drawing is easier when we just break it down into simple lines. Now let's keep drawing the neck and the chest of the camel. There we go. It's starting to look a little bit more like a camel. Our camel needs some legs. So I'm going to start over here. I'm just going to make a, it's almost like a swooshing kind of line, just coming down here. Make that the upper part of the leg. And I'm going to draw another line over here. Let's make that upper part of the leg. Now let's make the bottom part of the leg. I'm just going to make a simple, simple foot. There we go. All right, so now let's draw the belly. Don't worry, I'll put another leg in there, but let's draw the belly of the camel. There we go. We're going to put another leg in here in a very similar way. Swoosh. And let's do the back of the leg. Swoosh. And now let's make the bottom of the leg. Give it a little foot. All right. Let's add the third and fourth legs. They're going to be in behind. We're not going to see them entirely. They're on the other side. So let's draw one part of the leg here. And one part here. And one more. There's the foot. Now our camel needs a tail. It's like a long swoosh. Let's give it a tail. There we go. So before I go on to my next wave and transform that into something entirely different, I'd love to hear from all of you. How many of you are drawing camels along with me? Who's drawing something entirely different? And by the way, it doesn't have to be real. It can be imaginary. You can turn this into a dragon or a unicorn or some kind of hybrid, real and imaginary creature. Well, I did a camel with you and our kids were drawing furiously. We can check out their camels in a second. So Miss Leon's class, even if we can't hear you, you can show camels up at the camera. My, I jumped the gun. You did this incredible camel that actually looks nicer than real camels. We had real back screen camels on like a few weeks ago. And this is like the idealized perfect camel. My camel looks like a lumpy brachiosaur. I it's love very, it. It's a very, it's a, yeah. This is why you're the artist. And, uh, oh, Miss Leon's class, what do we guys have? Let's see. Miss uh, John Black, look at these camels. Oh, so cool. Hello, yeah, show us. Oh, oh, go ahead and the camera. Oh, what an amazing camel. Oh. Guys, I oh, can. You kids are amazing. Awesome. Wow, wow, wow. That is awesome. Well, I'm going to say, too, all our classes live on YouTube as well. You can share your camel pictures with us, and we'd love to share them with the AGO after this broadcast. So please do keep them, take pictures of them and everything else. But that's some amazing work. Baboni, that, like, wow. <laughs> hey, I had to practice. But you know what? Everybody out there, as soon as you put your pencil to paper, you are drawing, right? And with practice, we can draw in many different ways. So your camel may look like mine. It may look like Jesse's. It may look totally different. Maybe you drew something different. But it's all drawing and it's all art. Thank you so much for your creativity. I'm going to move on now to the second one, and I'm going to challenge you even more. What if we take the paper? What if I just turn this paper upside down? Now I'm going to look at this line in a totally different way. And there's something about this now that's making me think of 
waves. It's making me think of water. So what if I were to turn this into the bottom or the hull of a boat or a ship? And I can do that really simply. What if I just go like this? Okay, and let's imagine that's the bottom of a boat. We can even add some cool lines to it just to make it look a little bit more boat-like. All right, so let's just say that's the bottom of my boat, and then I can add a few details to make it look more boat-like. Okay, so let's add a little mast, very simple, just like this. It can be straight or it can be a little bit curved if you want to give that a little bit more energy. And then I'm going to add some sails, just very simple sails. And it's almost like a triangle, but I'm just going to give it some curved sides. There is one, and maybe I'll add one on the other side too, just to make the picture look a little bit more interesting. There we go. Now we've got a little boat and maybe, ooh, do I have a blue marker? Let me see here. Oh, I do, I do. Okay, so maybe I can actually extend. Actually, Jesse, I was inspired by your drawing and your blue marker because you had these waves. You had extended the waves like this. So I'm going to do that too. But in this case, it's going to be the water. Oh, and this is going to be, okay, so maybe the water is very turbulent and I want to show that there's strong waves. I'm going to add some cool spirals. Let's add some spirals. Woohoo! There we go. There we go. Look at that. Totally transformed. I'm going to turn it back around. That was the same line. Totally transformed. Okay, checking in with everybody. What are all of you doing? Okay, I got a ship too, but my line was in a weird spot to sort of encroaching on my third one. <laughs> the, camel, the camel looks like it's in a lot of trouble in this scenario. Like the boat's going to hit it. It's very exciting. But uh, let's see our, our kids. Now, they're taking a little bit longer. Take your time, guys. No hurry at all. Let's see what we've got. John Black. Oh, nice ship. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. We got a cat too. Someone changed instead of camel. And the guys noticed that. That was exciting. Bring the ship up a little higher. There we are. Yeah, nice, nice. Look at these chips. Miss Leon's class. There we are. Hello, everyone. Oh, you guys are amazing. Oh, we've got like a, a sock looking thing. You guys rock. Wow. I love the sails. They're so pretty. And they're so different from one another. It's neat, neat, neat. All the papers. So many. <laughs> And again, save pictures of these. We'd love to see these after the fact. We've got two more things to draw together too, but you guys are doing such an amazing job. Thank you so much, Miss Leon's class, Miss Matheson's class. I love it. All right, we're going to head on to number three now. Yes. We are. <laughs> All right, so here's the third one. So here's another challenge. We've Let's turn it sideways, okay? What if I were to turn this sideways like this? Okay, is that going to activate my imagination in a totally different way? So I'm looking at this, and to me, it looks like kind of like a pair of lips, and maybe the mouth is open, so maybe somebody is talking. So I'm wondering, can I turn this into a face? But we're looking at the face from the side. I don't have a lot of space here, but let's try. If that's the forehead... And let's make a nose, and then we can connect it right here. Here we go. It looks okay. And then we've got a mouth. So if I add some details here, it'll look a little bit more like a nose in there. And maybe we can add an eye. I can add a really large eye over here, and maybe some eyelashes. Okay, and we'll put an eye in there. There we go. So now it's starting to look a little bit more human. And maybe we can put some lines here in the mouth to show that, yeah, this is a mouth now. Okay, and maybe somebody is talking. There we go. And maybe some hair up here. There we go. Yeah. And we'll pause after this drawing. Okay, there we go. With a stretched out mouth. It looks a little funny, but it's kind of cool. I like imagining that way. Maybe we can add an eyebrow. There we go. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah, very, very good. Anybody else have any new drawings? Let's see what we've got. Amazing. Look at that. I see some faces. That's looking great. That's awesome, everybody. I love that we had a Mexico in there for a second. Yeah. Now, my connection gave out for a second there, but you did such a different face for me. I decided to make it full lips. A very scary face in mine. Very cool. For Halloween. Oh, oh, we have a dragon. We've got a dragon. Yes. These we are awesome. Dragon. It's Kermit. Kermit the Frog. Oh, amazing, everyone. This is so great. That's so great. And with the last section, I'm actually going to leave that one to all of you. Hmm. Activate your imaginations again. What can you come up with? So far, we've turned, we had the paper this way, right way up. We turned it upside down and we turned it sideways. Maybe for the last one, you want to turn it. Oh, I got a little bit of blue there. I didn't mean to get that there. Maybe you want to turn it the other way. Maybe you want to put it on a neat diagonal. See what you come up with. And you can keep working on this activity even after this session ends. That's awesome. All right. So, Jesse, is there anything you'd like to share before I go back to our slide deck? Well, I mean, I went really sciencey and did a graph. We've got a y-axis over here. We got oh! Yeah, it's like an economic forecast or something like that. But that's really dorky. So, if you're as dorky as me, you're welcome to do that. But I would love to see what you come up with later, especially the dragon kid, because that was awesome. But no, this is great. And I mean, we've had some amazing camel ships, faces. You guys did such a nice job in our classes today. We'd love to see those pictures and especially your fourth one later. But Lavoni, I'd love to uh, finish up. And if there's anything else you want to share with us before we wrap up together, let's uh, dive in. Yeah, that sounds good. And by the way, Jesse, that is not dorky at all. I love math. I love math and art and science. So I think it's so cool when all of these. Dorky's a high compliment at exploring by the CDF. Yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 we're really sciencey people here. So yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my other camera and we're going to share our slide again. Here we go. While you're pulling up too, I'll just put our, our fantastic virtual school program list on the screen. I'll make sure I get that to all our classes in just a second too, but our screen is back. So there you are. I'll there we go. So we're coming back to our inspiration, K.M. Graham's Arctic Night Number 2. I imagine you probably see this art very differently now that you have transformed that golden wavy line into so many different things. That was amazing. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. And if you had fun, I hope you join me and all of my art friends for more virtual school programs. We have free 30-minute Zoom webinars from Monday to Friday. Please note that all the times listed on this slide are Toronto time. So if you are in a different time zone, you'll just have to adjust for your time zone. On Monday, we've got Art Making 101. On Tuesday, Indigenous Perspectives. Wednesday, Black Artists and the Global Diaspora. Thursday, the Art Gallery of Ontario featuring a special organization. And sometimes we also feature your ideas and we ask for your input on what we want to do. And Friday is mindfulness. So I think Jesse's going to share this link where you can learn a lot more about our virtual school programs. We've got that up in our private chat, our YouTube things. If you register for today's program, you will get that link as well to follow up and learn even more, take part in amazing other art uh, programs. But I love everyone's energy and enthusiasm today. Laboni, this was so, so much fun. Um, before we wrap up and bring in our classes to say a big thank you and farewell, is there any final message you just want to share with kids about the importance of art or how they can bring art into their own lives? 
Oh my gosh, absolutely. Art is amazing and there's so many ways of being an artist. And if you're feeling brave and you want to share your creativity, you can use hashtag AGO schools across all social media platforms. And I encourage you all to stay creative and just keep adding your imagination to the world. Amazing. Can't think of a better message to wrap up with than that. Miss Leon's class, we're going to bring you guys in. Our Miss Matheson's crew at John Black. If you want to unmute your mics, join me in saying a big thank you and farewell. Uh, you guys did such an amazing job. Have a wonderful day, everyone. 